Welcome back everyone to the second Challenge Me Challenge. Sounds a bit weird. Mm. This is where you send me one of your photos and I edit it in my style or however I see fit, to be fair. It might be really way out there, I don't know. Uh, it depends on the image. Last week we had a landscape. Uh, there'll be a link to it here somewhere. And this week we've got a portrait. This is a self-portrait by Eleanor. It's a beautiful photo, absolutely gorgeous. You can do so much with this. I probably haven't gone as crazy as you could, to be fair. I've done it like I would a commercial job. Have a look, see what you think of it. If you'd like to send me one of your photos, there's a link down below, it's a Dropbox link. You can just drop a file in there, I'll get that. That's for your name and everything else when you drop it in so I know who you are and how to get in touch with you. Um, drop that down there. Really appreciate a like or subscribe for future notifications of what we do. It does mean a real lot to me if you could do that. I really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get on with this challenge and let's see how I uh, edit this photo. It's good. Okay, so this is a self-portrait uh, of Eleanor. She's took the photo herself, she's laid it out, and she's just took it against a plain wall, and she's left it there for everyone to do whatever edits they want. And there is so much that we could do with this. We could take her out of that, replace the background, we could just colour that one, we could zoom in to close to the face. There's so many different varieties. I don't quite know what I want to do yet, so as you'll see when we start in a minute, I'm just going to work on her and then I'll work out afterwards what we do. Okay so on this edit I'm just gonna have a look this is the original file that I got given and zoom in just have a little look the eyes could do has been a little bit sharper um, not quite tack sharp which is something I tend to like I'm gonna go down and just put it in the, the camera profile the Mac camera Lightroom is very good at and stuff like that so now I'm just going to have a little play, none of these settings are what I'm going to choose particularly at the moment, but I'm going to have a little play through temperature, exposures, highlights, shadows, whites, blacks, to see what I've got in this image that I got to play with. Okay, so first the real thing I'm going to look at on here is I'm going to sharpen the eyes and see if that fixes the eyes. So I'm just going to do a radial mask and drop that around the eye. I only want it on that particular section, don't want it anywhere else. I'm going to have a little look and just see if that's satisfactory for me uh, to do that. And I actually think it is, I think it's going to work, there's no problems with that at all. Um, and we're going to stick with that. Okay, so now I'm actually going to load up Photoshop. Um, so before I do any other edits, I'm going to do an overall edit so I don't want to crop or anything else at the moment I just want to fix certain things so I'm gonna have a look at the skin and the way I'm gonna look at the skin on here is I will actually duplicate the main layer I will drop the opacity down to 75% and I will use the patch tool and I will correct certain bits on there. I say correct, it's not correct is the wrong word, but just minor imperfections because she's got such beautiful skin. Um, I just want to add those little tweaks. Now you're not gonna probably notice this if it's just on social media or anything else. When I'm doing a photograph like this, I'm always expecting it to be printed. Um, it could be printed billboard size, I don't know, but I always work on every single portrait as though it's going to be printed and people are going to see every detail. So that's why I go to that. Yes, you're not necessarily going to notice it on a social media platform. I don't care. I still want it right because if that gets used and we use it for something, I don't have to go back through and edit. Do it right, do it first time. So here I'm just getting rid of um, some hairs from the eyebrows and just tidying those little bits up there now. Now, so I'm also going to look at the background and I'm going to get rid of, I've created a new layer now, I'm not editing anything on the last layer because that was at 75%. I'm doing this on a fresh layer and I'm just going to clone stamp or um, uh, heal all the dirt spots off the lens um, that are appearing on the background. 
it could be that I replace the background. It might be that I recolor it. I don't know at this point exactly what I'm going to do. I will sort of know that when I've got the color on her right, which we'll see in a bit. Um, so by doing this now, I'm just tidying up the image. It gives me options later. Uh, so I haven't got to worry about it. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a bit of dodging and burning. I've created a couple of action scripts which allow create a new curve layer, um, set right, and I can just brush straight on. So now I'm just gonna brush some highlights onto there um, because I want this hair to pop. I really want it to pop out. Once I've done all the highlights, I'm literally going over the bits that are already really light anyway. I'm just emphasizing the light on that. So I'm gonna go all over the hair. I will do this to the face as well in certain key areas, but not a lot. It's mainly for bits of clothing and hair and things like that. So I'm gonna go through this, then I'm gonna do burning and all the dark bits I'm gonna make darker, give great contrast into the image. So here you go, this is the end result of doing that budging and burning. And if I turn the layer on and off, you can see the difference that makes. And that really makes that hair pop. So now I'm just going to do a bit of burning, a bit under the lip there and a bit on the nose, a bit on the lip. I don't know what, there's a special word for that. I don't know what it is. I'm sure you can tell me. Just to emphasize everything and just drop it out there. Uh, we're going to darken the eyebrows down a little bit as well in a minute. There we go. And just under the jawline, into there. Uh, the important thing to do onto this once you've done something like this is just to zoom out and see if it looks all right. Because if it doesn't, you can just switch over to a uh, different color and paint it back. It's just a mask, so it's not really a big issue. It's not like we're affecting the actual picture. So zoom out afterwards, check you're happy with it, and then zoom back in. I am also just going to put some on this white shirt to separate the shirt away from the skin there and give it a bit more definition. There we go, if we turn the layer on and off, you can see what it's like before and after. And this is where you notice if something's not quite right. So I'm gonna go back into this particular bit and I'm going to swap it over and just reduce that burning onto that bit of there. I just want it underneath. It went over a little bit too much. So what I'm actually gonna do now is we're going to um, select the marquee tool and we're actually gonna select subject uh, and mask her out and we find the edges around the hair. Because I don't know yet what I'm doing with the background, I know I need to do something, so either way, I just want to cut that out uh, to the best that I can. By turning your view to black and white, you can actually see um, the mask really, really clearly and you can tidy bits up and see where things aren't quite working. It's the easiest way of seeing your mask uh, once you've got the gist of it. So as you can see, I'm just tidying those bits up there. And there we go, mask is completed. And you can see there, all nicely cut out. So now I'm gonna put some different background layers in. I'm gonna go ahead and choose some different backgrounds. I've got a selection here. I'm just gonna go through and see what sort of matches what I think. So I'm looking through all different ones. I can change the color tone to any of these. So I'm looking for the pattern at the moment and then I'll change the color tone afterwards. You're gonna drag this one in, just drop it into the background, resize it. And at the moment, it just doesn't sit very well at the end of the day. I'm not worried about that at this particular point. I'm gonna adjust curves. I'm gonna adjust exposure and that. Uh, I'm just on that layer and match it in a little bit. And we'll burn in the edges afterwards as well, a bit of vignetting into that, uh, just to make it sit a bit more. And I'm gonna play with the color temperature as well uh, into it. So there we got the first draft of the image. I've took it back into Lightroom. So it's before and after into that. So you can see where we've come and where we've gone. I'm just gonna color the irises in here, Lightroom. Yes, I could have done it in Photoshop. Um, I just like Lightroom for this sort of thing, really. It's dead simple. So I'm just gonna brush on a bit more vignetting into this. I've taken it back into Photoshop. 
um, a little separate layer and we're just brushing on the background. I want that background to sit a bit more, I want the base to be a bit more dark. So I'm literally painting on with that and then we're just going to adjust the opacity to match. Okay, so we're back in Lightroom now and now I'm going to look at crop. So I've edited my image to how I want it, which is great. But now is the time to look at crop, not before. I wasn't interested, if I want to change it later date and have a landscape for a different article or something, I want to be able to change that. So all I'm doing at the moment, I've done lights out mode, which is L on the keyboard, and it cycles through th uh, three variants, so semi-transparent, uh, pure black, and then off. And that allows me to not be distracted by anything else on the screen. So I'm just working out portrait, landscape, square, trying their eyes in different places just to see what works and what real estate I want around the edge. And I've got to admit, I quite like that in a portrait mode. Now, something I've noticed I've zoomed in here is the hair on the face is annoying me a little bit that's come across the front. Um, not a major issue, but because I did a, a create virtual copy in Lightroom just for that crop, I've gone back to the original editing in Photoshop and whatever I update on there will update on all the virtual copies as well, which is brilliant. Makes life a little bit easier when you work that way. We're just gonna clone out that. So I'm using the mixture. I'm using the clone brush when I'm near a junction because it gives a very neat, clean line. And then I'm gonna switch over to the heel brush for the rest of it so that I don't... Clone stamping tends to not be brilliant on colors. It's literally stamping from one area to another. I want to blend. So now I'm using the uh, heel tool to blend that in. There you go, we've got the final edit there in landscape mode, which is quite nice, that's the original. And then we've got the uh, portrait version as well. Two slightly different images can be used for different things all created from the same image. There we go, end photos. Hope you like the workflow and the way I went about that and showing you what we did. Eleanor, I hope you like your photos as well. It was an absolute pleasure to work on one of your photos. Thank you very much for sending that across. Really do appreciate it. There you go, everyone. I hope you really enjoyed watching that edit and seeing what I did from that photo to what I would do. That's probably what I would do on a commercial job to a certain extent. The background might not be so extreme, to be fair. We might keep it a bit more simple with just a plain colour and just a bit of gradient in the background. But from terms of editing, that's exactly what I do to that much detail. Go in, edit it all perfectly, because I don't know where that's going to go. I might want to print that at some point. It might be a billboard, it might be a magazine. I just want it perfect when it goes out the door. Um, I don't want to have to revisit it back in five months time and do something else with it. I just haven't got time for that. So that's what I do. Hope you liked it. Remember, if you want to send me one of your photos, link down below, just put it onto a Dropbox link, it asks for your name and everything else. I would really appreciate a like or subscribe. It really does mean a great deal to me and look forward to seeing you on the next journey.